One of the first things we do at the very beginning of a project is we have to go out and get the surveying done. The landowners will probably see guys out with tripods and trucks taking measurements. When we're doing the surveying, they actually place the stakes into the ground, so it gives the landowners an opportunity to actually see where the improvements are going to go. Next step, we need to define a laydown area. That's usually four to six acres where we can clear it out, gravel it, and use it for construction traders, for parking, for delivery of smaller components. When we build a project, oftentimes we have to make some improvements to roads that are in the area. The reason we have to upgrade the county roads is because we have large, heavy deliveries that are coming that these roads were never designed for. So we have to go in and widen and improve the county roads, which is usually a great benefit for the county and the local community. Landowners get to use those roads at planting time in the spring and then also at harvest. It's a big plus for them. They put the road through the field and we can use those roads. We used to have to go up through past the neighbor's property to get out to the road. Now we can use that road right out to the highway. We were having a lot of accessibility problems to haul grain off of the farm. The road had a lot of value to us. Once the roads are built, start on the foundations. Well, the foundations are so important because that's what the turbine sits on. And we've had very, very few foundation problems. We put a lot of work into making sure we don't. These foundations are, are very large. Uh, once we start pouring foundations, it's, it's a big job, and those trucks keep coming and coming and coming. They're large and they're, they're underground, so there's minimal impact to the existing land. The next step, we build a crane pad and prepare for the turbine erection. Cranes come to the site to start with a base section and four sections of the tower go up. Then the cell sits atop them. The hub and blades are the last things to be installed. The landowners really get excited and really love to come out and watch. They'll bring out their, their kids and their family. This is something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. It's the erection of the turbines of how they can put them up there and contractor there explain, you know, how they fit it together and guided it up there and unhooked it. It's a very interesting process. Another aspect of the construction of the project is for the operations and maintenance building. We build O&M buildings, which is for the teams that will be here for the life of the project. This is where the operations teams and the contractors will actually have their offices permanently and will communicate and coordinate all the efforts for the operations and maintenance of the project. All the power that the turbines produce have to get out to the grid. We often have to build transmission lines to interconnect our substation into a switchyard that connects it to the grid itself. These can be as short as 100 yards to sometimes 10, 15 miles. Once the project is commissioned or generating power, then we have to go back and actually start doing reclamation. This is where the contractors and ADPR make best efforts to return the land to its original conditions. And construction is inherently a messy process. We restore at the end of the project, and we leave it in as good a shape as we found it. Once they're finished, put the black dirt back in, we farm right around that windmill. The construction effort ends typically in the fall, often in six months to nine months. You know, you've gone from nothing to an operating wind farm.